Welcome to the Nameless Voices Podcast, Episode 4, now with that brand new year smell. I'm your host, Nanashi, and I apologize in advance for whatever this show is going to be. Going down the list, we have our usual recurring guest, Commando Expando. What's up, my guys? We have the head of the New Obsidian Duel Academy, Lady Sarissa. You know, I was half tempted to go, I'm not ready, but I'm ready. (laughs) We have our recurring migraine, Mimi Q. Mimi, 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 Mimi. We have a special guest here with us, a local friend of mine and a fellow Yugi tuber, New Pata. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nupula, or Nup, or however you want to pronounce. Uh, nice to be here. Nice to have you, man. We once again have our name changing guest, Raccoon Coon. Help! It smells like common cards and disappointments. This new year sucks. That said, I'm cooking a trash panda. Oh, understandable. <laughs> And we have our recurring guest and also our YouTubing Smash player, Yu-Gi-Oh! Meowdy, if you hear uh, clicking in the background, it's because I'm currently caving someone sculling with Mario. Noted. Giggity. I love how we got graphic really fast. Oh, please. Like, that's anything <laughs> different for us. Uh, fair enough. So, how's everybody doing tonight? Let's get started with that. Mimi has uh, been... Mimi's been up since five in the morning. Ugh. Nice. Oh God. My I know I struggle. <laughs> okay. Well, before we go, uh, to... go ahead. I was gonna say, I was like, I, I usually like go to bed early, like around four or five in the morning, because I usually work middays and all. But I don't know. I've been on vacation for this week, so uh, okay. I've been doing pretty well. well that's good. Okay, so to get things kicked off, we got a couple of birthdays to celebrate. Uh, Ruffy Traffy's birthday was back on January 1st. Happy birthday to you. And Tim Brick had a, has a birthday coming on January 14th, so happy birthday to you, too. Anyone else got any birthdays in the month of January we should know about? Not I mean, that I'm aware of. Is two months away if you go reverse. Right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Mimi's birthday's in April. Right, uh, April 12th. Fuck. Never mind. Yes. I was going to pull off a, a, a funny, but the character's birthday is in September, so it doesn't work. Uh, if we were going down every list of anime character birthday, we'd never stop. We just have to turn this into the birth cast. I mean, yeah, probably right. <laughs> well, uh, not much has been going on with me either. I've just been working. I've been building up some cards to build some new decks and new deck profiles, but not for Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. I, I, I'm dedicating a little bit of time and money for the first time in a long time to Weiss Schwartz because they are infinitely easier to build for since their cards don't lose value at the drop of a hat. So whatever money I put into it, it's going to stay about that way. So I feel a lot more confident doing it that way. But, I um, can't believe it. Also, they're very pretty. Yes, they are. <laughs> um... I am a little upset, though, because one of the podcasts that I usually listen to called Furcast has decided that they are going to uh, stop production after 10 years, which is an amazing run. But I am going to miss it. I them. still feel bad about it. Right? It, it, it hurts. The real, like, that's part of the reason why you even started this, and now to see that it's going down, it's kind of hurts. Little bit, yeah. But you know what? It's fine. We still have all the episodes on uh, recordings. We can listen to them whenever we want. I showed you my personal favorite, which I'm still glad they had video of. I guess you can say um, it really ruffled your fur. Yeah. (laughs) Laughter, laughter, laughter. So who wants uh, roasted Mimikyu? It's a Nanashi Shadow. Oh, Oh, boy. Heidi won't save you. I've got the kitchen knives and the oven ready. I no. got the turkey baster. No, Rose, Rose <laughs> the raccoon is dead. <laughs> okay, so um, as far as uh, content goes, uh, like I was saying, Yu-Gi-Oh, Nupata, and I, as well as Sarissa, are all YouTubers and Commando. We're all YouTubers, and we mostly talk about Yu-Gi-Oh and other stuff. Like Yu-Gi-Oh talks about, uh, well, he doesn't actually talk. He does smash montages, but. Um, anything Yu-Gi-Oh! related you guys are coming out with soon, or? You know, I'm actually thinking I'm going to come out with some replays for a deck that I've been working on lately that I'm very proud of. Which would be? As well as I'm promised, uh, 
You remember my old Magician's Dragon deck? Yeah, I remember uh, that. Yeah, it's going to be a revamped version of that using Wind Witches and Generators, but still using a Spellbook massive engine part because oh. it's focused <laughs> on the Spellbook. Oh, that's so going to be painful. <laughs> <laughs> I actually you... started buying the cards in real life that I actually needed, and I already have everything that I actually needed, except for maybe the Spellbook of Fates, but that's still in testing. Right. But I have they're not expensive really anymore, are they? Uh Spellbook of Fate is actually fifteen dollars a piece for that's, oh wow. Yeah, that's wow, that actually caught me off guard. That's actually the only um expensive spellbook card right now. So everything else is a lot cheaper than that. I thought they were cheap now. Or <laughs> or is or spellbooks getting new cards? Um no, they do have a link monster, but they don't really typically go into it. They have it as an option. Oh, right. Crowley, right? Yeah. Yeah, Crowley is not uh, that, that, great. Yeah, it in most um, spellbook decks, it's a two of because it's an option to go into and then just get another spellbook, which actually helps out a lot. But other than that, it's just another spellcaster on board. Right. From what I'm seeing on the uh, TCG player, spellbook of fate, it's never been reprinted. Oh, yeah, that would explain it. Wait, what I thought I thought it was reprinted once. A spellbook of nope. fate. Oh. There is a ultra rare and ultimate rare. Oh well, if those oh. are the only two printings, then it's no freaking wonder it's expensive. Ultimate is like twenty one dollars. Yeesh. <laughs> Good luck yeah, building so that. I'll have fun with that. <laughs> how about I mean, you? How about I you? I have all the cards though. So. Well, how about you, Nuke? You got anything new coming down the way? In terms of videos, unfortunately, I'm currently on hiatus and everything, but I've already sent you a deck list of what I worked with yesterday at my locals. Yes, the 60-card Infernoble Six Samurai mix. Oh, God. It, it's a lot more vicious than you would imagine it, but uh, essentially it's running the original Six or It's running the Six Samurai build and everything, but Infernal Knights is in there as extenders and as searching and everything like that. Right. And it is literally notorious at just heavy comboing and everything like that. I I've kind of feel sorry for the opponent on real life versus the uh, online Yu-Gi-Oh! like I normally do, because online you can at least go faster. Not to mention you don't have a time limit except for the three minutes total over your moves. Uh, Something like that. Uh, uh, that's not to... Uh, sorry. <laughs> what was that? Uh, I said that you could take that time limit off on, especially on EDO Pro. That is, yeah, true. that's generally what I do when I'm testing and all. Because and, and the uh, Yu Gi Oh Pro and everything, they have it to where if you actually do a move, you get an extra five seconds on the, your timer. Right. So the time limit basically means nothing so long as you don't stop. Yeah. Es essentially, as long as you know what your combos are and everything. And for me, with six samurais. Um, you know me for this for the longest time. Six Samurais was the longest running deck I had before Burning Abyss. Right, that's right. I remember that. You were always about those Six Sams, and then you just ended up uh, trading them out for... Well, then then you also added in Burning Abyss, and then you traded it into a bunch of... Like, a couple of other things. And then you started looking into Noble Knights. Well, Noble Knights was more of a secondary deck at that time because they were slowly getting introduced... By the time we got the, the Knights of the Round Table box, that's when I converted from Six Samurais to Noah Knights. But Burning Abyss was actually a um, something of an accident on my part because what had happened um, was Burning Abyss came out of nowhere when it first got announced. No one knew anything about it except for a week before the uh, set came out because we got a early leak of the TCG exclusives. And Burning Abyss, and I think, what was it, the, uh, the UAs? Oh yeah, or the ultimate oh. athletes. I think they were the second. <laughs> well, I think they were the second TCG exclusives. I might be wrong on that. You have to correct so. me though. I think so. But um, it was either the it was either the UAs or it was the Kaiju's. But I don't think Kaiju's came in until later. But anyway, mm. Burning Abyss came out of nowhere, and people didn't know what to think about it at the time because they didn't think it would get popular and things. So the only card that was expensive at the time. Um, was Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. Oh, yeah. And and so I started getting these Burning Abyss cards because I, I just want to experiment. I want to see how well if they could do anything or not. And Dante's were about $15. Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon was about 30 to $50. Um, and I traded 
um, someone at locals buy Autodice Dragon for one of their Dantes. I think it was a bad investment, but I just I just didn't care for Pendulum. So I was like, you know what? Just trade this and everything. The very next day Pendulum! after that. <laughs> anyway. But is it? On there. We were waiting for it. <sighs> but but anyways, um, the next day after that trade, Autodice Pendulum Dragon dropped to $10 and Dante went up to 50 Oh, so you ended up making your money back after all. <laughs> yes, because... At that time, no one knew what Bernie Abyss could do, you know, because no one was prepared for it. No one knew what was going on with these new cards. But then the next day, people were experimenting, and they realized, it's like, oh, Tour Guy can do stuff with this. Sangin can do stuff with this. Ooh. So Dante became a very important card. And that's pretty much how I started Bernie Abyss. I originally grabbed them because I didn't want to play a meta deck because I thought I was being sneaky about it. And then all of a sudden, I'm playing the meta deck. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. I know how that goes. It's basically the same way that happened when I invested in dinos. It looked like a fun deck with an easy power source, and then all of a sudden, everyone's playing dinos. Everyone. Yeah. And in in my, in my case, it's both dino as well as um Salaman Great. Actually, I have three cases: dino, Salaman Great, as well as um rockets. You mean Salaman Decent? <laughs> Oh, was Solomon Grundy this whole thing? No, I think, I think you mean uh, Salomon Vorings. Oh my god. That works too. I feel bad for you every see, this Solomon is why Great I play tunes. player. Who plays tunes in tournament, honestly? <coughs> also, Kai no. Pegasus? S yeah. Salad's nickname, Salad's nick, um, Salomon Great's nickname kind of resonated because I'm a vegetarian and everybody just kept calling them salad. So I officially dubbed Salomon Great. Salad? <laughs> The yes. official deck of vegans. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, you know what? That's actually that actually makes sense. I I'm okay with that as an excuse. Uh, unfortunately, for me, I'm twenty twenty one are vegans confirmed. But did you come? But did you find out the reason? Did you get to the uh, root of their problems? Uh, I. Uh, anyway, we are playing to tell you. Uh, uh, okay, uh, what were you saying, noob? Well, for my mindset of salmon grates and everything like that, I was thinking more of like when you don't cook meat and everything, what that um, disease is. I can't remember the name. Salmonella. 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 That's pretty much my thought. Salmonella, E. coli. I forget the third one. Well, Salmonella was the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Because that's pretty much what my thoughts were when it came to salmon grates. <laughs> well, now that I've uh, officially done all the Yu-Gi-Oh! profile updates, and I'm finally happy I was able to update gusto with some actual effort behind it i'm really proud of that one i might actually do some weiss updates uh and, and some new ones because we got some new stuff about them but i'll talk more about that later for now going back into Yu-Gi-Oh, we should probably talk about the current meta decks and techs and there's two right at the top <laughs> of every list every single i deck. called it okay Right now, from what I understand, the current meta decks are Drytron that abuse vanities and VW abusing VFD. Did you see either of those in your tournament that you had, Noop? I saw uh, Virtual World. I did not see uh, Drytron at all. But then I again, it was only like a, you know, a three-round thing. We didn't have many people, but um, I did see Virtual World. Um, so yeah, that that deck is uh, problematic unless you have like hand traps or something to deal with it. I also um I also kind of found something funny with my RDA deck in Virtual World. Uh -huh. Since exceeds don't have levels, you could red rain VFD off the field. Oh, what is it? You could red rain VFD off the field. He's talking about that red, trap card, red rain. Red rain. Is, that, is it spelled the way it sounds? I don't know. R E G I N. Oh, R E I G N. R Rain as in like. R E I G N. Okay, I'm, I see it. So I've never seen this card before. Well, it's an oh. RDA. It's an RDA card, so. It's, I'm trying to find it on you guys. It comes from the sim I, it I comes just from the it. simple fact that since um since exceeds and links don't have levels, they're the first they're the first to get blasted by red rain. 
they are. Uh, permission to read aloud what it does. Sure, just make it quick. Knows. All right. Um, if you control a level 8 or higher synchro monster, banish all monsters on the field except the monsters with the highest level. Also, the remaining face-up monsters on the field are unaffected by other card effects except their own until the end of this turn. If a Dark Dragon Synchro Monster is Synchro Summoned to your field while this card is in your graveyard, you can add this card to your hand. You can only use this effect of Red Rain once per turn. Of course mm -hmm. you'd know about this card. Okay, I should it's probably... It really rains on your parade. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you have a picture of this card. <laughs> uh, if you guys can find a picture of it, drop it into the podcast chat real quick for uh, Noob. Yeah, I'm going to say now, quick, yeah. I don't think that card works the way you think it does, because Links and Xyz monsters should be immune to anything having to do with level. But... I could take a quick look at it, though. But... I think, I think this so. might be one of those exceptions to that, where it specifies the only things that survive are the monsters with the highest levels. Theoretically, it hmm. should take Lynx and Xyz off the board, but we'll have to double-check on that. If this ends up Based working, the, the people in the RDA Discord server are going to be going nuts. <laughs> Based on the way it's written, I want to say that it does wake, work the way Commando thinks it would. Well, there you go. Just based on the way it, it's written. I could be wrong. Well, if somebody wants to bring in a an image of Red Rain for a noob and drop it into the chat real quick so he can take a look at it, go right ahead. I, I can uh, do a quick look and see what's going on here. Because well, if that's true, then it's going to be interesting to see how that works. There we go. I just remembered we have a bot in the Discord server that can bring up cards. Uh, okay, Red Rain. Okay. Okay. I love so, bot. I, yeah, I love that bot. Thank you, Posh <laughs> Shithead. <laughs> There you go. Oh, Thank okay. You. Uh, yeah, I remember this. A few people were excited about this card because it's a trap in RDA. <laughs> uh, okay, if you control a level eight or a secret monster, okay, that's that's the only leveling part we have to worry about here is that you have to control the level monster. Yeah. So if that's the uh, only concern. Monster. Oh, hey, I can run that in my magician's dragon deck since I go into crystal wing synchro dragon. I mean, what? <laughs> Let me. There, there's a <laughs> what, there's a website that usually has the um ah uh, okay. usually has the rulings on it. Now. Well, while Noob looks up the rulings to make sure that this card is as powerful as we think it is, let's go ahead and continue on down the list. Um, we got some upcoming. That's fine. We got some upcoming products going around. Uh, Legendary Duelist Season Two is dropping on the twenty second of this month. Uh, anyone even interested in that at all? Uh. Again, I forgot what's in there. Uh, it's going to come with the legendary support for uh, blue eyes, um, red eye, uh, basically legacy support for a bunch of the stuff that we got from some recent legacy packs. Harpies, black wings, uh, blue eyes, all kinds of stuff. Uh, I think it might actually come with the new blue eyes and galaxy eyes cards. Yeah, it comes with afterglow. That's it. Is it the one that has the Wind Witches? Because I don't remember which mm, one had the Wind I don't think so, no. Okay, then I don't care. Okay. Uh, well, we've also, got Blaz <laughs> we've also got Blazing Vortex dropping in a month. I know a couple of us are excited about those, if for no other reason, the new Armed Dragon support. An armored situation. I was expecting a that bigger reaction a than that. I'm... <sighs> What was it again? I'm sorry. How am I coming up with my puns? It was, we were talking about the new Blazing Vortex set dropping next month. I haven't had a chance to look at it. Like, you know, I've been busy with everything, so. Mimi, you're failing at your job. You're supposed to be the one coming up with bad puns. Now here I am coming up with bad puns and no one's laughing. It's contagious. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Mimi's just being silent because apparently the puns annoy you all. <laughs> Cheeks out. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. After your knowledge is like nothing beyond uh, was it like Ixies? Anything beyond that, I'm just confused as all hell. Well, the legendary Zulus box actually comes with support from all the legacy characters uh, in that oh, area and missed? before. Oh, Sorry, so like really no went. pendulums, no links, nothing like that. Yeah, it's pretty much all fusion, ritual, synchro, and Ixies support, from what I understand. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> 
We're going back in time, folks. Wait, what, are, what topic are we on? My apologies. Uh, we, were, we were talking okay. about the uh, Legendary Duelist box and Blazing Vortex. Ooh. Yeah, quite excited for those. Oh, I bet you are. Uh, after that, we got can the we Ice Barrier. That... Hmm? I said, can we say that this pack is like a Back to the Future for us? Basically, yeah. And it's the second oh. one, so we're basically on Back to the Future 2. Ugh. <laughs> okay, here, here, here's what I'm getting here. Um, Nanashi. Yes. Uh, I know this is a bit off topic, or at least for what you're going for now, but based on what I'm seeing and everything like that, it as long as you control a level 8 or higher single monster and you activate this card, it will banish any monsters except for monsters uh, with the highest level, which means it will also get rid of exceeds, links, and stuff like that, because while they don't have any levels... They are not being restricted, or it's not restricting it to level monsters. It says all monsters, unless it's the highest level. Okay, then. So, yeah. Uh, Congratulations, Commando. You found an amazing tech that answers both Xyz and Lynx. He's got to make sure it's a level 8 or higher synchro monster first. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, easy so... for RDA to do. Hell, I think their main goal now is to land on some gigantic 12-star. That's true. And Infernal Knights have level 9, so... Oh, yeah, that means they could use it, too. Oh, shit. Well, no, wait, wait, wait. Doesn't it have to be a dragon? No, it just no, has to be a synchro. Oh, a God. Level eight or higher synchro monster. Oh, God. Yeah, so um, it could be any level 8 synchro. Level 8 or higher An Emancipator so. Dragite going to use that card. Let's go. Uh, Rock still meta. This, uh, card's gonna fuck. Get, this card's really going to drag the game out even more. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. My, my deck seems to drag out a lot. Ah, it really is contagious. He's a dragon <laughs> belly. Yeah, we're really dragging this on. Yeah, let's move on. But, uh... Uh, ice barrier structure. <laughs> the ice barrier structure drops on February 19th. I assume none of us care. I uh, do, actually. Uh, I want people to not be able to do things. Actually, I, actually I don't kind care of enough. need the silent angler that's in the ice barrier structure. Oh, fair enough. Um, then we got that ghost. Uh -huh. from... Go ahead. I need it, I'm sorry. but not for the reasons that you think. I assume you need it for sharks. Yeah, pretty much. That's up. Uh, what are you going to say, Noob? I'm mad at that, that archetype. Be I'm mad at that uh, deck because they essentially threw away the freezing aspect that the Ice Barriers did. The, st the stunning they did on everything. They still have that. They, no, they got rid of... They basically got rid of that strategy for, as their main point and instead just do a swarm strategy like so many others. Well, they do both now. Yeah, it's the new cards do other stuff. It still feels really cold. Well, yeah. yeah. It's more of like they added monsters. Uh, someone, I don't remember who, but someone said that they kind of just threw darts at the dartboard, and wherever the dartboard landed, that's what they restricted. Yeah, that sounds about right. Instead of picking good restrictions, like uh, not being able to declare an attack, not being able to target, slash destroy cards you control. If you yeah. control more than one, and that they would stack, and then one was like, but for one, one of these, it's like it's tribute summoning. Like no, there is barely actually there are a couple decks that do tribute summon. I'm pretty sure Drytron tribute summons for the vanities. Yes. Uh yes. But that doesn't. Um, that's not going to cause ice barriers to become top tier. No. Unfortunately, we would make them even be relevant as if they prevented something actually relevant. Like, for example, how Shadows came back because some of the cards prevent actual relevant things from happening, like being able to special summon from the hand, being able to uh, summon at all, or being able to do something, or just negating a relevant type of I, card effect. I, I guess they were... Mind, that's how they work. I guess they were afraid of there being another structure meta. Well, here, here's uh, the thing that gets me, is... Um, what is besides the synchros of ice barriers? You know, you got Trish, you got uh, Gungner, Brio. Pri you mean John Cena? Yeah. <laughs> well, pretty, pretty, pretty much any of the synchros of for ice barriers do do receive praise and everything for one thing or another. But the main deck itself, there was nothing there. I mean, it was all over the place. I understand there might have been some strategy, but they never committed to those strategies. Well, because there's... every time they introduced new stuff, it was like different players. Like, what in the world are we doing here? Well, there's actually a reason for that, and it's based on the lore of ice barriers. 
The original intention of Ice Barriers was that the Ice Barrier main deck was designed to repress the Ice Barrier extra deck. Based on the lore from the Dual Terminal world, they were never meant to summon it, at least to my understanding. They were meant to just keep them from existing. So the main deck was never really supposed to summon the extra deck. They could if they played it right, but they weren't supposed to. Well, from that lore perspective, I guess, I guess they did the opposite and they just killed themselves. They went extinct while the synchros became live again. <laughs> That's generally how it ended up working. Yeah, everyone started playing the, the synchros and the main deck just kind of festered. I mean, it's still dead right now, and I don't think anything in the main deck or the new stuff is going to help it at all. Probably the not. The only thing they have, like the only thing they have for them, is their um, is their reinforcement in the army card for those. That was the only good thing they ever had in the main deck, as far as I remember. Yeah, that's about right. But the deck as a whole is just it was dead on arrival. Yeah. Um, like mutants. I, well, oh, now hang on a second. Mutants actually has some hidden potential. I faced a mutant player the other day that was doing decently. <laughs> I told you. They're not like meta or game breaking or anything, but they're a headache. Well, I don't I don't care if they're meta or anything. They just have to at least be playable. Like Listen, ice barriers are not playable on their own. I I'm, I'm <laughs> not arguing have that. To heavily, so I just I've not seen a mutant deck as of yet. I've have heard of people experimenting with it. And some have been doing it with Thunder Dragon and everything, but I've not actually seen anyone who's at least played it casually or competitively. So fair enough. I, have, I can I've, see the. I, I can see either. how they would both be able to slash each other, mutant because they the trap banishes. But I don't see anything really happening with that because Thunder Dragon Colossus is still banned. Yeah, uh, that reminds me, actually, the person I faced that was playing Mutants Online that one time was using the Thunder Dragon 1-star as a tech card to give them more resource so they could keep playing. Yeah. So um, I saw someone, I think it was, I don't know who it was, but someone made a one one and used Spriggans with it, Mutants, and they oh, did yeah. pretty good. Oh, yeah. That was actually Spriggans. a very nice and refreshing one one to see, because they made it very unique by mixing it and uh, it yeah. worked quite well as like uh like a stand maybe a tier two standard tier two tier three deck it's it had plays the problem with it is i don't know if there's a fusion that allows them to summon on their turn i think it's just the trap card so I... they kind of have to expect that if they like if the opponent can pop the card on their turn like for example if they if mutants become meta, we might see Typhoon become a, become a card. Because Typhoon would allow people who are going second against mutants to pop the fusion before they pop it. They use it, I mean. Right. I think they do have well, one spell that actually does perform a fusion, but I could be wrong. I only saw that deck once. Well, my uh, question is, do mutants benefit from going first or going second? Uh, uh, going first. For first, yeah, they mo most of their uh, effects usually either rely on their trap cards to gain advantage, or their monster effects will work on the opponent's turn. Okay. So going first is kind of a priority. Um, we also up next we have the Ghost from the Past set coming, which is supposed to come with a bunch of legacy support for Dragoonity, Shadal, Cipher, a bunch of other stuff. And it's going to bring Sun Avalon to the game and a new archetype that I still don't think we know the name of. What was that? It, what is it based on? We don't know. We, know. we don't have a clue. The, I think currently it's in secret, so. Is there anything on it? Uh, not that I'm aware of. But know what, that we're getting a new one. Uh, what were you going to say, Mimi? It might be one of the ones that were leaked that I told you guys about back in, like, episode one. Right, right. I remember that. A few months ago, you le told us uh, some leaked stuff. Um, the flip dark plants and the linking water aquas. Yeah, uh, back on episode one, Mimi had uh, ties with a friend who happened to get some leaked information, and we still haven't seen all of it. Linking water uh, monsters. Sounds like Marinsis all over again. Yeah, apparently it was supposedly the rumored dam was going to be the Ripple. Yeah. JoJo fans rejoice. The whole concept being one one droplet of water turning into a wave over time. Makes sense. Uh, let's see. Beyond that... I was assuming it might have been Ancient Gardens. Sorry. It's fine. Go ahead. 
I said I was I was thought that the secret uh, arch that was coming out was the Ancient Guardians, or is that something else? I think that might be something else. Um, after Ghosts from the Past, in April 30th, we have the new Ancient Guardian set dropping. Speaking of the devils. Yeah. And then we also what have been getting... Hmm? We, we don't know yet. We only have oh. the three images of the archetypes, and we know some bits and pieces of them. Um, we know one of them is going to be a synchro-based set that looks like it's going to be, uh, well, their leader card is basically the White Tiger Zord from early Power Rangers. Go, uh, go, Power Rangers. God, don't start that. We're never going to stop. Um, another <laughs> one was a picture of what looked like a giant mechanical snake, which means I'm hoping we're going to actually get a decent reptile archetype. And then the last <laughs> one was a picture of some maestra-looking pendulum girl. I could imagine them bringing Venoms back as an arc- as an upgraded archetype. They oh, need to. Boy. They would need to fucking overhaul that set. Do we even know if they even remember it, Venom? Like, you know how I would want to f- fix Venom? How? Get the antidote? Make it, make it fusion-based. Screw that. Screw the whole... Make it fusion-based. Make it work with the graveyard. Have more stuff that places Venom counters that's in the graveyard. Like, for every, for every reptile in the graveyard, place a Venom counter on something. That's not bad. You're basically trying to say turn them into predator plants almost. Yes. I was and thinking Demion, but that's about. The same I had thing. just a scary thought. If that if that did come to pass, and those two archetypes in the same deck, and make them work with starving venom in in some manner. Obviously, huh? I just I just found out um, starving venom actually counts as a venom monster. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Well, it's, it's its name. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, just because it has the word in the name doesn't always mean it works that way. Thanks, Konami. I have a that, question. That's true, uh, but well, what's that? Everybody Sarisa? says except Frog the Jam. Yeah. Nobody says except Frog the Jam. Uh, what was that? Sorry. I have a question. Um, I'm just doing like oh, hmm? some looking, and I was wondering why Bean Soldier has. Salamandra, the equip spell. <clears throat> oh, uh, because being soldier. Is call? Yeah, that's me. Hold on, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. It? It's fine. Okay. I thought that was mine. It's fine. It's because being soldier is a meme. It's not mine. I don't have any. I don't have any. Um. Anyway, doesn't uh? Did he say Jerry Bean? Bean Jerry soldier. beans. Oh no! Don't say Jerry beans. Jerry beans broken. But beans. Isn't he a... It is Jerry Beans that he's thinking of, I think. Well, she's thinking Bean of. TK. Isn't he a warrior? Uh, yes. He is the highest attacking no, three-star about, normal. Le- no, I'm actually talking legitimately about Bean Soldier, not uh, Jerry Beans Man. Okay. Bean Soldier? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. I got an idea. I love uh, Let's actually I put this him. bot to work. I actually oh. see him on here. He is a earth plant level four, fourteen, thirteen. A plant warrior that attacks with seeds and swords. He really is holding salamandra. How did I never notice Broken. that? It sounds. It. Hmm. I can't even think of a good pun off that. Don't worry about it. Its existence is a pun onto itself. Um. After the ancient guardian stuff, which will hopefully get leaks for soon, we got uh the lightning overdrive set, which we've been seeing a lot of leaks for. It's looking like a yeah, nice yeah. set. reference, hands down. Hmm? I just want the Utopia stuff. It's literally yeah, called Lightning Overdrive. How is that not a JoJo's reference? Uh, because uh, Overdrive is just a generic term they throw on stuff to make it sound cool. Truthfully, I just want the Utopia stuff. I there, forgot they had the Utopia stuff on there. Yeah. Uh, there is one card that I saw out of the Lightning Overdrive releases that actually has me a little pissed off. Um, it's the new Scrap Support. It's a four-star tuner. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. It allows normal summons by popping monsters, and if it's destroyed by a scrap effect, it searches any non-tuner scrap or their field spell. My I have my problems are twofold. One, it is a four-star Earth dinosaur. Yep. That can freely pop cards. Oh yeah, I forgot. Oh, he can yeah, be using I dinosaurs. See, I see the shenanigans that that could happen. Number it's two. Also a Hmm? Sorry, I jumped out again. What card? We're talking about the new scrap support. 
Oh, yeah. My, uh, I was saying that my first issue with it is that they made the mistake of making it a dinosaur. Hell yeah, three scrap searcher, three fucking dino. My second issue with it Fossil is... Fossil dinos! My second issue with it is that they messed up on a perfect joke meme name opportunity. Its name is Scrap Raptor. Why didn't they call it Scraptor? Probably because it wouldn't be able to be searched by Scrap. Yeah. Well, um, but think about it like this. It, think about, if you think about it like this, that dino can then rap. But I'm... Uh... Well, here's the thing. That's the name of the Japanese version. We don't know if they're going to make that the English version or not. That's true. They could make it Scrap Rex. That is true. That is true. I didn't think of that. But but here's here's the thing. It's a tune. It's a level four tuner that dinosaurs can abuse now. Yes, which means Yay. now dinosaurs can actually summon an eight star dinosaur synchro, or the equivalent of what they, they want to do before? in the meta game. Not easily. Not yeah, not easily. <laughs> I was able to force uh, one to happen in my dinosaur there? build by using uh, one of the baby Sarasaurus says 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 as one of the tuner materials. But now we can just use a four-star and this thing. Well, here's my question for you, Nanashi. Yes. Would you use this in your dinosaur deck? Absolutely. It is a dinosaur-type tuner, no, can... and it makes Giga Spinosabit playable. I was about to say, I want to summon that boy. Well, now you can. <laughs> Yay! And uh, after Lightning Overdrive, I think that's everything we had to talk about. God, I, I want to say that there was one other box I was going to talk about, but I cannot recall the name off the top of my head. God, what, what was it called? Raccoon, please don't. <laughs> I well, it was from a mile legendary away. God box. All right, the God the box. Exclusive that's also getting a Gandor reprint. Oh, boy. If you tell me that they are... Gandor, Brother Wes, come to me, baby. I have your visa waiting. Please. I swear, if you tell me there You're is no furry uh, influence in Yu-Gi-Oh, you're just straight up lying. What? What? I'm saying, have you, uh... Fuck, push the talk. I keep, uh, push up the menu. <laughs> um, you, cause you were just talking about a, uh, like a fox boss monster, right? God. Box. Yeah, uh... B-O-X. Right? No, no, no. The God Box. The Egyptian God Box. Oh, I thought you said Fox. No, 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 no. No, God Box. Oh, yeah, with that... With that I mean, spell I'm still not wrong. Obelisk ...that basically tells a card to die, die, die. Yeah, all the, the Egyptian gods actually got some good support. And Same exchanging souls. Yeah, but you basically were mentioning... It makes fear mode useless. Uh, not useless, it just makes them more playable than they were before, and that's saying something. Now, what's the card that he's hooping and hollering about? Game 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 destruction. Cannot oh, be normal okay. summoner said, must, must be special summoned by the hand by sending two monsters from your hand and or face up from the field to the graveyard, and cannot be special. Actually, it can be special summoned after the proper summon. This card gains 300 attack for each banished card. Once per turn, you can pay half your life. Apply the following effects based on the amount of Gandor monsters in your graveyard. One, destroy all cards on the field except this card. Two, banish all cards on the field except this card. Three, and by the way, with different names, banish all cards on the field and in the opponent and your graveyard. You can only, I don't know if it's a once per turn effect. I think it's a soft once per turn, so you can do it twice if it perchance gets negated, but you have monster reborn. He says that as his nightly prayer right before he goes to sleep every night. I do. <laughs> I shamelessly do because, and the reason why is because I, everyone else hates it, but I'm like probably the only one out of all of us that likes skin uh, Danger Dark World as a as a deck idea. Didn't you just because uh, like didn't you play that for a bit? What? Uh, Danger Dark World. No, I never played. Uh, I never had a chance to play Danger Dark World at all. I only knew it about is... it. Right, it's so right. Fun. It was one of the twins that played it. There's a pair of twins that yep. play just about everything at one point or another at our local shop. Uh, their names are Tom and John. Hey guys, and uh, they <laughs> the one, one of them played Danger Dark World. Yeah, buddy. Uh, by the way, I faced both of them yesterday. Oh boy! Next time I'm in West Virginia, want... I'm going to face those twins. You're gonna have you're a gonna just day. do it. You're I gonna just that. do a tag duel with both of your decks, just playing your ABC and your. Red Dragon Archfiend. Good luck. Yeah. One of them is playing Cubics. Oh, oh, right. 
That I was a nightmare a, to deal with. I actually have a friend that's a math teacher that plays cubics. <laughs> Teachers playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Please. Well, how old is he? How old is he? We're teachers. Awesome back, by the way. Sorry about that. Welcome back. Everything good? Yeah, it was just uh, the missus was ta- wanting to talk to me about a laptop that I told her that I was going to buy for for Christmas, but couldn't afford it at the time. Uh, well, we just lost Commando. He probably just dropped uh, his connection. His sacrifice will be noted. Uh, Who? Wait, whose sacrifice? Uh, Level new, 6 going uh, dark. Commando Expando oh, just dropped. I guess you can say he stepped on a landmine. I so, swear to God. Yeah. Um, he'll be he'll probably be back soon. Also, was my question ever answered? Sorry, I was like... Oh, there he is. What was the question? Sorry. The question? The, the... Sorry, cut off for a bit. It's cool. Okay. So uh, what, was, what was your question? Why does Bean Soldier have Salamandra as a sword? We and... don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's probably, a warrior. It, well, no. It's yeah, but it's... Yeah, and it equip only to a fire monster is what it says. Shh, that's that's that that's that secret stuff for twenty twenty four. Oh god! <laughs> when they make a bean deck and make Salamandra an OP card while equipped to that with all these other effects, it force equips Salamandra out of the deck to a to a bean monster. It could just be a reference that he that he's Broken. a warrior for his for his uh, archetype. So. Could or be. not our type, but for his type, because it states in his uh, flavor text that he is a warrior. He's a plant warrior. That is, and he's armed with spades and sword. That is true, I guess. All right, well, that's pretty much everything Yu-Gi-Oh that I had to talk about. Um, anyone else got anything they want to mention Yu-Gi-Oh related? I did want to expand on how I'm the probably one out of all of us that actually likes Danger Dark World. Sure, you can and, take a couple uh, minutes for that. The reason is just because it's such, it's all gas to your car. You just got to okay. figure out what you want the car to be. That's... You could just, you could make it synchro based. You can make it exceed based. You can maybe add some cards to fusion summon a weird fusion monster because it's all like fuel. Oh, I get what he's saying. Oh. Because the main deck is basically just the soup that the extra deck can be whatever you want it to be. Yep, plus you can add well, main deck monsters to result. For example, I can add stuff like uh, uh, back then a lot of people... I don't know what the uh, one was. You, But people used to use uh, the Chaos card that copied... Uh, Phantom of Chaos? Or no, 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 yeah, no. Phantom of Chaos, and they used to copy the Sky card. The Sky Lord? What was his uh, name? Uh, Sky I mentioned it in the Nashi a while ago. It was that Sky card. Sky Scourge Norellis. Sky Scourge Norellis. Yeah, I remember that. Use that with that in this deck and just mill your opponent for five and giving them one while also doing that, and it wouldn't even matter for you. Yeah, that's you true. You could do that. You could you literally... That's why I want Gandora into the West, just so I can add it to like the side deck or, and or main deck so I could actually fulfill the deck. Now, but I know... You can just um, do a ton of stuff like for example no one probably knows the card cracking dragon i know the I mentioned name. it a couple times oh it, it was in the anime of it is yeah it was in I episode two of the anime uh main character used a lot of it. people mm-hmm. uh, it was in episode two of Yu Gi Oh rain so the first villain that they fought against uh used it as his only boss play and then uh revolver as he's known in japan uh use it as a stepping stone for his actual plays because he plays a rocket dragon deck yeah i just posted it in the chat yep oh you did hold on yeah he posted a link to it. uh, it's a ve- even though it was used in the anime it's kind of vague a little it's a very it's very vague like probably no one knows about it they probably just got it as a super rare and then got rid of it but uh its effect falls cannot be destroyed by battle with a monster with equal or lower level and it uh, has a burn. Its effect is when your opponent normal summon or special summons exactly one monster, and no other monsters are summoned. Meaning, if monsters are summoned multiple times, the effect doesn't activate, but if it's one, like, for example, you can't use it via pendulum summon, the monster loses attack equal to its level, and then you burn for the amount of attack lost. So, so what I could do is I could add that into the deck and end on a board that has, like, a couple negates plus Cracking Dragon. Like, very specifically, probably a, a combination of uh, Hope Harbinger, another negate for spells and traps, so they don't remove it. 
and then just have Kraken Dragon on the field? I have a question. Shoot. What? Is this dragon always on crack? Pretty much. Okay. But yeah, it, the, how you used how it was expected to be summoned was to use Jack Wyvern to summon it via the graveyard, I think, after like sending it with Dark Machines, I guess. But now well, like those vague of cards can be used in that. Well, here's my thing. What um what card can you really think that was it was always supposed to be summoned in that way that we haven't abused at the CCG. Uh, he makes a good point. Because every time they came out with a certain mechanic, we always find a loophole or workaround or anything to get the stupid thing on the field, unless it's garbage. <laughs> like, just... Yeah, can't argue that. All okay, right, well... When they uh, go through, they push the top be a bitch again. <laughs> For me, it was a bitch again. Yeah. I said either that or you could just... Uh, Put it on the field like you're in season zero. Yeah, that's true. If you wanted to go back that far, but yeah, uh, on the subject of soupy decks, um, I helped out uh, Yugi Noto once with a deck that was basically a fluffle light sworn blend. It used a couple of dangers, <laughs> and that deck was a nightmare. <laughs> it just goes on and on and on. <laughs> the only limitation for now their shout out. The only limitation that deck has is the fact that there's a 50, 15 card extra deck. That is literally its limit. Yeah. Really? You, you'd Isn't be surprised how many times that uh, fifteen. It's a good thing for everyone that plays against it because it means you don't have to deal with the most terrifying board you can imagine. A deck that is so powerfully, generically super spammy that its only limitation is the fact that you can only put 15 cards in the extra deck. That is terrifying. You know, it's funny because I didn't even know that Yugi Nono had a Discord server until that mention of that video. Oh, uh, yeah. He, he's had that server for a while. He took a break from it for a while, but then he came back. He's actually getting ready to move. Ooh. And here I just came on just to, to like do Jerry Bean uh, man. <laughs> Jerry Beans man, dear God, don't don't Broken. bring him. God, don't bring that up. Again. Oh, oh, oh! I've already, I've already, I can send you the the picture too, for video purposes. Don't. I have already made a Jerry Bean man riding a larva moth wearing a top hat. Of course you oh my did. God. Drop it in the chat. I'll, <laughs> I'll drop it in the video somehow. Um, going back to the uh, Danger Dark World deck and everything, the only one I was ever aware of at the time was where they were just pretty much running nothing but Dark Monsters and everything, using the beginning of the end as their draw engine. Because Dangers was just stupidly good in terms of discarding and drawing at the same time. Yeah, and they still are. It's just that most of the meta archetypes are neutered that would do it that need to be well, discarded yeah. and to do effects like for example uh thunder dragon and both thunder dragon and orcus they're basically neutered and that's because like i think they understood when they were hitting both that they weren't the they would be relevant even if danger got hit so they just hit the necessary to hit danger cards mm -hmm. and then just hit the decks yeah now, here's my question um, Dragon Link and everything. I know that it's not being played anymore in the new format and everything, but was it really because of one card getting banned and it really just shattered and fizzled out Dragon Links at that point? Or is it just, you know, people who were just being, you know, mad about it and just they didn't want to play because they couldn't lock the deck for the other player? A little bit of both. Um, um, A little bit of both. Because It's partly because the deck... The it, sorry, go ahead. Uh, it's mostly because I'm still a Yu-Gi-Oh player, but I'm more casual anymore. I did I retired from competitiveness uh, a couple of years back, so I go from time to time looking at decks and everything like that. And then it's like new form of thing we got banned that I can recall was the tuner, the the uh, Buster Blader tune, Dragon Tuner, and it's like oh. Dragon Links are dead now. I'm like, what? You have all this crap and everything. Why is one card killing you? Because they want to I mean, win more. They want to win through degenerate means instead of building good monsters. Mm -hmm. For example, you wouldn't... I mean, that it's and also, Yugi, like, Union Carrier yeah. exists. So Union Carrier and... Uh, honestly, Union Car Carrier and Krishan Halka Fibrax are going to get cards banned no matter what. 
Like, if those cards didn't exist, a lot of the cards that are around wouldn't be banned that are. That is and true. I do agree with that. It's just that uh, they want to win without committing all of those resources, I guess. Either that or well, they just want to do that set strategy. Because, for example, back when uh, Agrapane was out, people used Agrapane to summon out another negate and just get a ton of negates plus fuck your searches, the, the card. Yeah. Yeah. Realistically, meta well, players just like the idea of locking you out of being able to play mechanically so they can get their wins easier. Be it through multi-negates, uh, mechanical locks, extra deck restrictions. It does not really matter to or, them. They just want to win. Or you link. <laughs> or, yeah, yeah, that was another one. Yeah, you link was the most dumbest thing that the kid ever invented for links. I was like, are you so you tell me... I could have a second link monster in that link zone as long as I have a link monster pointing to the to the extra monster zone that's not occupied yet, and that can actually stop my opponent from doing things. Are you kidding me with this? Well, I'm glad that Master oh. Rule 2020 fixed that at least. <laughs> yeah, oh, and I'm did it. speaking done, done, done. of you uh, links and all that. Fire, fire, or Firewall Dragon, your thoughts on that? Oh, the Errata, right? Um. Yeah. I'm glad that they did, in fact, errata Firewall Dragon because being able to use its effect to summon out a hand multiple times was dumb. Limiting that to hard once per turn was all they needed to do, but then they made the card completely unusable in generic builds by making the monster that had pulled out a hand Cybers type. They should have done that to begin with. Um, I don't agree with that. I don't have a personal issue with, with Firewall Dragon pulling any monster out of the hand to the field, but... Them limiting it to Cybers means that not even Cybers players are going to play it. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if you look at the deck and the anime and everything like that, and possibly the manga whenever they get a chance, all he had was Cybers. I know. The main so character. It made no was... sense. Well, yeah. It didn't make yeah. sense. It's just for reference. It probably will never pop up in the meta because people aren't going to be. There is a new uh, Link 4 plant monster that had a decent effect where it would bounce to but you would take all the life point damage people aren't going to use that people are going to use like decode talker if they want a reliable link well they're going to use any link four if they want a decent link four mm -hmm. well there's also even... a new decode talker coming out well i think it's already out in japan it's the fire one um you can uh, pay like a thousand to draw a card or something like that I'm sorry, uh, no, decode I... talker heat so that's a, like, that's it. one that's one of the big reasons why you see code talkers in tournaments in Japan. Right. Okay. Now, hang on a second, guys. Uh, first off, Kesetsu, welcome to the stream. Nice to see you. Hello there. Hey. Uh, hey. And what were you going to say? Hey, hello, Ars. Um, I'm going to have to AFK for a bit, so I'm just going to leave call to make room. That's fine. Do what you got to do. We'll see you okay. next time. Also, screw you, Tori. I heard that. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, you're, you're not welcome. Going back onto the firewall thing. There are a lot of way better Link 4s, but even then, for reference, Salomon Gray being meta, they had a they have a lot of really good high link rating monsters that they barely use. Uh, if you want to know more about those or how and how they were played, you can watch Connor Lockhart's Salomon Gray 101 video. He I know it's a bit of a meme vi all 101s are meme videos, but they do show you how a lot of the Salomon Gray cards can be used. And just cards in general can be used, and they're a good stepping stone. But he and he uses the very big monsters to just blow up boards and whatnot, mm -hmm. and they're good. But you watch that, but then you watch old Salomon Great videos where they're actually competing in in tournaments and whatnot. You don't see those monsters. That is true, you actually. Just, yeah, you just don't see those monsters at all ever summoned, unfortunately, because. Cybers is not for like. Unfortunately, Cybers cannot pull off summoning huge monsters because they are not generic. It's all like cyberspace, and they don't have that great of Cybers generic cards at all. Not really. No, they. The biggest problem with Cybers is that they were more or less built exactly the same as they were showed on the show, and building cards according to how they show on the show has historically been known to be. A subpar card designing gimmick. I hate We're to disastrous. say this, but the exception to that rule is Black Wings. Like I said, subpar doesn't always mean great <laughs> or bad. It, there's always an in between or an exception. Also, to the rule. ancient fairy it's dragons. Either meh or Jesus Christ, why they think this is a good idea? There you go. Ancient fairy dragon. Oh yeah.
Still bad. Imagine and, if tunes were like an yeah. anime. Oh dear God. Oh uh, boy. Honestly, I would have actually I preferred wish. them to be like in their anime effects, or at least the god cards. Like Obelisk is the only one that is closest to his anime or manga effect that he'll ever get because he has that protection and all that. It's like okay, Obelisk has this protection, but why does uh, why does Slifer or Osiris and the Winged Dragon Roll, why don't they have protection when they did in the anime and the manga? Kaiba sheds tears of <sighs> sorrow every single night, realizing this, that every single god card in the game had to be nerfed to be imported into the actual TCG, except his. I mean, to be entirely fair, they're not going to have a whole freaking chant in Egyptian for a card, are they? I mean... Fair. Yeah. And also, going back to how tunes in the anime, like if tunes were like how they were in the anime, with effect with the TCG, they would still be subpar. <laughs> like, tunes... Are still mediocre. I'm sorry, but they still are. I love tunes to death, but they're shit. MST well, to Regeki, you're bored. Well, well here, not. Here, here's the thing: um, Toon World in the anime not only protect the Toon monsters or anything like that, but prevent your opponent from attacking directly if you had a Toon monster on there to begin with. That so, is yeah, true. But, it did a lot more in the show. I mean, yeah, Toon Kingdom t- does that now, it, but in a sense. Toon World itself. I mean, don't get me wrong. Tunes have some really good support cards. The problem is, well, they're tunes. Their yeah. the, their their whole thing, their whole style is their own weakness. So it's... tunes can very easily be summoned. It's just that they have no extenders to make good, better boards or OTK. I, so yeah. you kind of just end up like, for example, in Duel Links, they use uh, Tomb World plus Dark Magicians in order to actually play. Where they would they would they would use the spells to summon Dark Magician and Dark Magician, like well the tune versions out of the deck in hand and graveyard because they are all they count as Dark Magician monsters or Dark Magician girl monster. Yeah, I mean um, fair. I mean even then tunes just kind of don't really do anything. They have to rely on other like support. Like don't get me wrong, they have a good control style, but they have to rely on basic Xyz monsters or something else to really be of any use. So to speak. I mean, that is kind of them relying on other monster, other archetypes because those are dark magician cards. They're new. Yeah, that's definitely the, tunes, one of the, uh, the bigger the issues. Spells. But yeah, they those cards alone don't even allow them to actually like summon and make a decent board. It's kind of just like they get a monster, they get their field, and then they get a uh, omni negate or some gimmicky traps in the back, and then pass, and then yeah. they expect that to kind of carry them. Yeah. It's very similar yeah. to kind of how Orcus played before Bardiche. Bardiche, yeah. That's the, yeah, they, that's the they biggest get issue a, with control decks, is that, they, you know, go ahead. The only issue with it is, as I said, tunes don't have extenders or follow-up plays. If you get rid of their board, they're kind of stumped. Orcus, on the other hand, don't have that problem. True. Didn't have that problem, kind of do now. Yeah. Well, hard part being banned kind of hits them hard. So yeah. yeah. Well, if it wasn't banned, yeah. we might actually have a problem. I mean, that is true. See, Orcus was one of those decks where you didn't know what to really hit, but you had it had to be hit. For example, they hit Name Mermaid. They hit Harp Horror eventually, because people, I believe, were actually advocating for Dengears to be banned or some other Orcus extra monster, but I cannot remember stupid. which one. No, they. It was uh, Galatea. Yeah, they were think- people oh, yeah, were thinking about either banning or or limiting Galatea because Galatea would get a counter trap or their field spell out of the deck. I mean, considering there was like so much searchers for traps and shit, I don't think Galatea being hit would really do anything to Orcus. But hard part well, of being were- banned was the smart choice. What I think they should have done is like either limited or semi limited their counter trap, limited hard horror, and kept called by the grave of three. Yeah, that probably um, would have been a then- smart move. Because I mean, yeah, it I mean, would have still it would have still allowed them to become something, and it would have allowed them to better sell the uh, normal summon for Mech Knight, the Mech Knight I mean, uh, Orcus card. Yeah. So that would have actually had some market value. Plus, people would actually continue to probably play Orcus, and it would be another deck in the meta that would be powerful, but on the probably same level. The well, problem is that they they tend to neuter decks. Whenever they kill one, they usually kill the other. So I mean that being yeah. I mean that being said, Harpar to any capacity will still allow Orcus to do what it does best. Even with or- Harpar being one, they have foolish yeah. burial, they've got again like scrappy cycler to send so it said to in so many ways. It being a one would basically do nothing. Yeah, it would be a it, it would be a hit of some sort, yeah, but 
it wouldn't do much. The carrot trap. Well, well technically, good. with how I see it, not really because. That would be like taking into account that called by the so people could actually set up a board and then set call by the grave if they think they're facing an orcas player and then when they proceed to try to use Harpor's effect, if I don't know how Harpor's effect used to re resolve, I don't know if it was banished for cost or banished and it happens. I believe it's banished for cost. Could, but it you is, could. Yeah. Okay, then that wouldn't work if it uses the effect, but when it's before its effect resolves, like if they have to send it via their thing, I think when, like after the resolution of the normal summons effect, you could call by the grave to banish it, and that would be something for the deck, so it would be around, but it could be very much interruptible now. Because what happened was, or with Orcus, they had some. There were so many resources and generic stuff around that if they hit them one way, they could do it work another way. The carrot trap being hit wouldn't really do anything about being honest. I mean, the carrot trap is good, yeah, but honestly, it's not really hit worthy in my opinion. They could probably, probably just, live without it, yeah. I just thought I would hit it for con like consistency sake, so it's a little bit harder. Just so yeah. like they can't run a more danger based engine in order to try to also mm. pitch one of their har things and then use its effect to recur harp horror from there if it was hit by called because it does game. have a secondary no. effect. Okay, what but were you going to say? Thing, what is it? What were you going to say? Well, I was going to say is like, well, here's the thing though: if you try to keep any cards and keep try to keep the consistency of the deck, we saw what they what happened to uh, Sky Strikers on that. Uh, they just kept winning and everything to the point. It's like, well, screw it. We're just going to get rid of your best card and kill the deck. Yeah. yeah there is yeah. no right answer when it comes to limiting cards or adjusting them for the sake of making the deck maintain its playability. There is no in-between. Or if there is, there's a too fine a line to really hit it accurately. Mm. Yeah, because the thing is with Orcus, Harpar was the only hit they realistically needed because Harpar was just the reason Orcus was as splashable as it was. So mm -hmm. Harpar being hit is the only hit Orcus needed. If it comes back to one or two by some chance, they're going to take something else for it, which would probably be Babel. I know people want Babel to be hit because it basically allows like Orcus to play during both turns. Like, okay, yeah. I'm going to do everything. I just did yeah. on your turn too, so I get my shit back. I think Babel should have should be limited if Harpor ever comes back. Don't they only uh, ever run that's one? The yeah, that's what I was going to say. Be hanging it to one would do nothing. Buying well, it right would do something. The reason is literally because they, if it gets banished, they can't necessarily recur it that easily. It's that, the same logic mm -hmm. as Harpoor being at one, but called being at three. If it's banished, it's a bit to hard one. to recur. So if they get to it, but then it gets removed, banished, they can't necessarily recur it back so easily or just get another. That's fair. Just have Maxi go back to one and we'll all be happy. Uh, no, 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 oh god, no oh god. <laughs> three. Uh, 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 honestly, uh, I, I, is it Maxi uh, technically searchable now? It always yes. was. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Always you was. See, I mean, honestly, people get hate me for this. Hate me for this opinion. I know, but honestly, I don't think Maxi should be unbanned. That uh, let's oh. let's okay. Let's not go into that any further than that <laughs> because if we no, do, not. we're going to be uh, here all night. I yeah, I I mean I can't, but I would. Well, um, I can see my hate comment or you coming, Keith. Just a fucking moron. <laughs> we'll be right back. I'm hearing something. I'll I'll turn around. All right. That's fine. We're gonna all be right. uh, switching gears, anyways. We've pretty well been talking about Yu-Gi-Oh for a good forty-five minutes now. Let's try and talk about some other games, because we're okay. already at that one-hour um, mark. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. It's all right. You're doing better. If you like, yeah. I'll go ahead and go first. So I can get away. Just go ahead and get a, uh, get away while I've been playing. Sure, go ahead. Go into whatever. Good work. So I unfortunately cannot stay. Well, that's have a, a great one, everyone. See you next time, man. Are you as well? Yeah, work and all, you know. Uh, yeah. But uh, one game I've been playing for the longest time now is the uh, Cyberpunk 2077. So, ah. so I've got to get that out of the way first, and then we can go to a bit more pleasant talks later on here. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. So how have you been liking the game? Uh, 
the game itself is not bad. I don't think it's the pillar of all pillars that they've been making it out to be, regardless of the glitches that it has. Uh, I believe that they probably really overhyped the game, but it's not a bad game. One of those, like, you know, okay, it's an enjoyable game. I could literally put it down and play it later if I wanted to still get enjoyment out of it. I just don't think it was, like, you know, the, the second kind of, you know, Christ or anything like that. But yeah. it was nothing for that. But then again, um, if they can get rid of the glitches, well, mostly the crashes, which they've done most for the PS4 Pro, um, which is what I'm playing it on. Right. Um, base PS4 and base uh, they're screwed right now. There, there's no hope for them at this point in time. Not surprising. Well, um, thank you for talking about that. I was actually kind of curious. Um, if I may take the reins, I'd like to discuss Weiss for a minute, because I play a second card game, Weiss Schwartz. I don't know if you know about that, Noob. Okay. Um, uh, unfortunately, I do not. I've always, when it came to uh, collectible card games, Yu-Gi-Oh! has been the only one, because I justified it as like, okay, if I play Yu-Gi-Oh! and everything like that, that can be my focus on spending habits. But if I start playing other card games and everything like that, I'm going to go bankrupt. <laughs> That's fair. And that's basically what I've been trying to keep an eye on, where I'm not spending as much on Yu-Gi-Oh cards because I'm just waiting for the value of everything to bottom out to nothing. I can put all of my financial effort into Weiss because their card values don't plummet every time there's a reprint. Oh, well, hello there, Nautic. You joined in kind of late. I just realized I'm still uh, muted. You okay there, So bud? what's it called again? Weiss? It's called Weiss Schwartz. Hang on. It is not a card game on motorcycles. No, it is not. Game. It's basically uh, anime the card game. They take multiple different anime and a couple of cartoons and video games and make it into playable series of decks. Uh, old ones like okay, Karen Log On and Excel World. Newer ones like Overlord and Mob Psycho. Oh my god, I've been... They just dropped Mob Psycho a couple of weeks ago. Uh, hang on. What's that, Nautic? Uh, I didn't say anything. Okay, because we heard your we heard noises coming from your line. How are you doing, by the way? The noise the is my fan or something. What's that now? Just woke up. Oh, you just woke up. Okay. <laughs> well, I was talking about Weiss. Um, they just released the Mop Psycho set, and I looked it over at first. I didn't think anything cool about it, but then I saw that they had this really cool mix of Mob and Reagan cards, and it's they have some fun stuff, so I might be actually gearing toward making that. I, I'm just looking at this. You said this is like based on anime and mangas and all that? It's based on anime, plus some video games, plus some cartoons. Uh, they have stuff like Garen Longon, Excel World, uh, Overlord, Mob Psycho, JoJo Part 5. Adventure um, Time. Adventure Time was just uh, added that, recently. I understand Japan. Let me know when I have Jack. Daxter and I'm all game, all hands on deck. <laughs> I'll Roger keep you posted. And Weiss Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I understand Japan when it comes to their copyright and everything like that. They're very linear about it. Uh, but it must be a nightmare to the West. Actually, it hasn't been that bad. They've been able to get the majority of the archetypes that people want to see over here in America. There's a few that we haven't seen that I'd like to see. Uh, they've got Star Wars and Godzilla over there, for an example. Yeah, like, like I said, they have more linear copyright issues. It's not, you get the permission from the original offer over there. You know, you can do what you want as long as you, you know, com contribute to, you know, the them and everything, either by payment or by recognition and everything. Yeah, over here, it's copyright. like you are condemned to death if you try to do anything. Uh, what were you saying, Nautic? I was saying, how do they get the copyright for it? it doesn't, because uh, the, well, the Godzilla IP is owned by... Uh, Hasbro, isn't it? Uh, uh, I think it is now. Check. Is Godzilla. Well, um, to go down the list of uh, incoming stuff, uh, they've got fan Fake Grand Order Babylonia dropping later this month. I'm not really that interested in it, but I know a lot of people are Fate fans. Uh, ReZero is getting an expansion called Frozen Bond in February, and uh, Magia Record is getting its uh, set expansion in February as well. Um, Date A Live is getting its set released on March 26th, and there's another version of Magia Record, I believe it's the anime version, it's getting its set released on April 23rd. 
I um, might try ReZero. I've heard a lot of people say good things about it. They've got like three, four sets now. And we have received confirmation that we're going to be getting Fate Stay Night, Heaven's Feel, Kaguya-sama, Love is War, SAO, War of the Underworld. Sure that. hmm? Oh, okh. that's a good anime, too. If there's a uh, Queen's uh, uh, Blade, I'm, I'm actually going... If, if White Schwartz ever does... You cut out there, buddy. If White Schwartz ever does Queen's Blade, I will do White Schwartz. I'll keep you posted. And we did just get confirmation Which... on another one. Uh, they have confirmed that they are going to eventually be releasing Bofuri. I don't want to get hurt, so I'll max out my defense. Okay. I've, I've actually seen parts of that anime, or at least, you know, snippets and everything. So she's pretty much, you know, she literally dumped all defense points into her uh, attributes, didn't she? I want to say she's basically the uh, defensive version of... Sh she's the uh, waifu version of Shield Hero. <laughs> Oh God! I don't know for sure because I've never well, seen it. See, uh, see, here's my—I I, I know it's a little derailing, but I'll—I'll I'll make it short. But here, here's my grape when it comes to the you know online fantasy animes and everything. Overlord did it right, at yes. least for me. Yes. But every time I see them do this, I'm like, why can't you just do a fantasy setting anime and just be done with it? Like I think Goblin Slayer actually pulled it off the best when it came to that stuff. I can't argue that. Not a big fan of that one myself. They, by, by the way, they actually have a set in White Schwartz as well, as does Overlord. Yeah, because every time I see these an or online anime fantasy things, it's like, you know, it's either going to be, you know, interesting enough to keep me going into it, or it's just going to get so dumb because, like, it doesn't feel like it's fantasy. It just feels like, you know, they're playing in the game and it doesn't make sense. That's kind of one of the reasons I had an issue with Kona Suba. <laughs> Then the premise just threw me off within five minutes. You know what? Is that the one sense? with the most annoying um, girl in there? Aqua. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Konosuba. Yeah, so doesn't make sense. What? No, well, he's the most annoying girl in there. I said, which one? Aqua. Aqua. No, I like the other characters. Mr. 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 Oh, no, no. Aqua, I've heard that she is the most whiniest thing in the entire seasons. She is. Uh, what were you going to say, sorry? I said, you know what else make, doesn't make sense? What? Buying shirts at the soup store. Uh, <laughs> uh, where did that originate? You from? say my jokes are oh, bad. I um, don't remember. There's a guy on YouTube uh, named Purple Eyes. Uh, hang on, we just lost someone. Uh, oh, it was it was Commando, Commando again. Um, there was a YouTuber by the name of Purple Eyes FTW. He did an abridged version of Code Geass. In one of the last episodes, he did the soup store thing as a completely unique joke story within his episode, and it's been memed to death ever since. Welcome back, Amanda. What's the Thanks. Fuck? My Do phone tends to cut y'all off it's randomly. Cool. Um, what was the original origins of the soup story thing? Because I know I understand the meme. I've seen it more than enough time. But what we was the original content? It, it was oh, um, it was kind of dumb. Uh, in Kogias abridged, uh, whatever the guy's show was called Code Men. Um, oh, I don't mean the abridged. I mean the original content. Like, that is the was, original context. Was, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we just said it. Yeah, that's that's literally the original context. That's where it came from. The guy just made it up off the top of his head, and now it's incredibly hilarious. No, I, I don't mean the, the parody. I mean from the original source material. That is the original source material. An abridged series. No, 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 it came out of no, his I, head. I don't mean the abridged series. I mean the original content. Of, we just of, said. Dude, uh, okay, I don't okay. mean the abridged. He means from actual Code Geass, not from the abridged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, what was the original content? Oh, it was uh, Code Geass. But what was the scene about? Was he just calling someone about it, or is that just completely random? He was calling his Why friend for help to save his sister, Nunnally. Okay, and that, and then he turned into an abridge where he was saying that he was in a, um, in in a, a soup, soup store. store. Yes. Okay, okay now so I'm original, sorry. <laughs> uh, that's fine. No, so the original all content is that reserved. he was calling he someone about his sister, right? Yes, he was calling for yes. help to save his sister, and that's where it came from. Okay. Huh. <sighs> But anyways, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Um, I am working on some new decks. I'm finishing up a special blend on Adventure Time, and I might be doing a mob deck, still deciding on that, but my Adventure Time build is almost done. And when it is done, I'm going to have a specially made purple deck box for it, made by Box Gods. 
I love his deck boxes. They're metal. They've got glass. They've got little plastic windows, magnetic lids. They're fantastic. And they suit my expensive Weissworts decks very well. Can you say that it's a adventurous history? Don't become the new Mimi. <laughs> yeah, we 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 yeah, ones are annoying enough. I thought that was a good one. Come on. Well, of course you would think so. Doesn't mean it is. Tori, <laughs> your jokes about as good as my relationship. It's pretty fucking terrible. <laughs> That's because you can't hold a relationship for two seconds. Oh, oh no, I bad. mean, I'm sorry. He, he could. Well, 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 I couldn't last two seconds. Oh wait. Uh, <laughs> you <laughs> roast on yourself. I just realized what he said. <laughs> Dear God, that was a complete brain fart. <laughs> yeah, you did. Fuck. <laughs> All right, so I talked about Weiss. Does anyone else have anything game related they want to talk about real quick? Yeah, uh, oh. Vanguard. Oh yeah, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. You get your Vanguard hit. Yeah, um, Chaos is back, and he's and he's a more hilarious than ever. This is fucking to grab with angel feather, tells me. No, what he says is this now. He says, um, he doesn't get a gift, he gives a gift. He says, Merry Christmas. He says, Merry Christmas, have this gift for me coming out. But here's the catch. It, you, 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 um, then actually probably remembers his old limit break, right? Vaguely. Where if something were to be unlocked, you so blast one to destroy it and draw a card. Now he takes, he takes the gift back. He says, "Give me that back." <laughs> oh. He gets he gets an imaginary gift force for every force every. That's just mean. <sighs> yeah, it is. Yeah, because part of Chaos Breaker's lore is that he's like a jester. He, he'll give you hope or take it with the movement. They even so they even tell you it in the text, like, oh, this is a gift? What a fun thing to play with. Because um, Chaos Breaker normally doesn't get a gift, but if you meet those un his unusual circumstances, where he says, Catablast 1, give a gift, but lock something. Gotcha. I mean, if I, I mean, also, he, he basically just goes, Angel Feather, don't get protect, lol. Right. Okay, he so... Pisses off, he pisses off um, people who want to accelerate their markers. Like, he just tells Genesis to go fuck themselves. Uh, Genesis <laughs> is Force, mate. Not Excel. No, Genesis is Force. Yeah, exactly. that's, that's what I said. Um, he tells... He tells um, Tachikaze go fuck themselves. He tells a lot of clans to go fuck themselves. I bet. A any clan that doesn't really focus on getting gifts like crazy really doesn't have anything to worry about him. I mean, yeah. I mean, Angel Feather will on Protect, protect 2. Chrono Fang Force 2. Um, just depends on what the deck is. Well, I'm pretty sure every deck depends on the magic gifts to some degree. So Chaos Breaker just can just go against anything at this point. He's a bit slow to start up, though. I mean, yeah. I mean, not, I mean, to be fair, something that gives and takes force markers isn't going to be instant. Mm, probably not. True. All right. Um, um, anything else, Vanguard, interesting? Or is that pretty much it? Well, I, I was going to say, Dragonic Kaiser for going the blood is here, and I fucking love it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I'm not as love with it as I originally thought. And don't get me wrong, four drives is fucking great, but like, I did pick out good to get Narukami because they're getting more shit now. But honestly, the blood definitely is good because he gets four drives, it gets pretty beefy, it makes it tough to guard against. But at the same time, it's nothing to really scream mad about. It's definitely good, but right. it's not like too OP. Also, I want Spectral Duke. Yeah, he's you know he's you know he's already been printed V series. He was printed like a month ago, I think. He he was announced like like a month ago, my dude. Yeah, you Duke know, Duke is sexy. I've been testing him on Carfa area and I love him. Cause he just casually gets forced to like it was nobody's business. She could sell to. Um yeah, he gets Axel, but he could pretend that he gave himself force. I mean, to be fair, he does get two crit Vanguard's great points Vanguard's great three or greater. Exactly. Okay, Noctic, uh, Noctic, can you please stop doing that? Who? No. I mean, Noctic. 
that, that fucking popping noise. God damn it, man. Anyways, um, anyone got anything else they want to talk about? I was going to uh, try to talk about Hearthstone because I haven't played in decades and I was about to hop right back in, but I had like a three gigabyte update, so <laughs> that's not happening. Yeah, I haven't played I mean, Hearthstone in forever, so I don't know what it's like, and I wanted to share the experience, but that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, think of think of MTG, but less MTG and more yeah, uh, cartoony guys, weird comics. Yeah, I, I'm familiar with enough of uh, Hearthstone to know what it is and is not. Um, wait, wait, wait! What's going on? I miss playing Hearthstone, so that's why I was popping into it too. What are we? What are we talking about this time? Hearthstone. Hearthstone. Uh, okay, all right. Well, um, <laughs> Hearthstone is nothing like MTG. That's the joke. Well, really not. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what I was thing. It was like a joke thing earlier. So it's, it's yeah. like a. It's more like a. How do I explain that? Um, <laughs> It's very mobile game like, isn't it? <laughs> it's yeah, it's meant for the mobile. Like there's a reason like you can't play it physically. Why do right. you wanna... I find it better on the PC though. But I then mean, again, everything's be... better on the PC. I mean what? Yeah, I mean, PC yeah, even what? Even porn sites on PC. <laughs> oh my god. What? And actually I apologize for his behavior. I will oh, you... put my boot up his ass later. And I will enjoy yeah. every second of it. Pixar didn't happen. <laughs> um, she was she wants to watch put a boot up my ass and now she just wants to watch. Nice. I mean, dude, given your history with how you photo, with foot. photographs, I don't think we have any. I don't think you have any room to talk. <laughs> Look, that table of simulator thing was bullshit. We will never let you live that down. <laughs> Nashi. yeah, worth it. Uh I'm gonna go ahead and. I head off here. I have to take care of a few things with, with uh, family matters. So that's fine. We were Fair actually enough. probably going to be ending soon, anyways. We've had an hour and a half. Uh, All right, then. The PTS uh, was I, worth it. <laughs> I do. I, I do appreciate this opportunity to be on this podcast with everyone. So I'll hopefully might join again sometime. Well, yeah. We yeah. record on the first Monday of every uh, first Friday of every month at three p.m. Eastern. The only reason we didn't do it on the first is because it was the first. Yeah. So if you have that time uh, free, feel free to hop in. I appreciate it. I'll catch y'all later then. See you catch next time, you. man. All right. Later. All Pleasure right. meeting Bye. you. Same. Bye. All right. Well, this seems so. like a pretty good moment to end the show on, I'd say. Unless anyone else has anything they want to oh, add. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, uh, fair enough. What? I have one thing no, to I'm add. Good. What's that? All you base would belong to us. All your base is mine. Um, uh, oh, I should put, <laughs> uh, see, now I should put my fuck Tori's ass. In That's our... wait. Wouldn't that create like um? Wouldn't that create an infinite loop of putting each of your feet up each other's asses to the point where you just start spinning infinitely and then create an, an, a source of energy? Yeah, like the Isle of Man flag out with our yeah, this is one of those Well, considering things. how his considering how his foot would never be able to reach my ass in any given time length of time. Um. Yeah, there would never be an infinite loop because my foot will always go up his ass and he'll never be able to reach mine. Fair enough. I'm basically I'm basically a crux. Oh, but I do. All right. Well, this has been pretty fun for the first show of the new year. I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. Same here. Merry Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> if you bring up the oh. fucking foot pick thing again. Dude, I will bring it up every episode that you show up if you give me a reason <laughs> yeah, to. I, want... I mean, what are we going to say not to make fun of Case Nutter is a good reason. Oh, uh, yeah, well, you know, I was just going to say, I mean, if, if, if you wanted some feet pick, just uh... <laughs> Oh, oh god! <laughs> I'll consider. I'm teasing. Yeah, no, it's, it's not like you want the toes painted or not painted. Well, I mean, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, this has been fun. Let's cut it off here. I've been oh. your host, Nanashi. We're all gonna have a good day. See you guys next time. Peace. Uh, yeah, bizz, bizz, bizz.